All right, in today's video, we are going to look at some whole life insurance policies that were purchased about five years ago. They are whole life insurance policies that have the ability to accept premium payments for an individual's whole life. You'll see this particular client started in his early 40s. However, he wants to stop the funding after five years. I should say he is stopping the funding after five years of payments because what we're going to look at with respect to the numbers today are his actual policy values. We're going to see what has actually happened since he started his policies and uh, policies back on day one. And we're gonna look at each year and track the actual performance and then also see what things look like moving forward. So this will be interesting. What we've got is as follows. We've got two companies here. He had decided to take out policies with Mass Mutual and Guardian. He started with Mass Mutual back in 2018. He started in March and he's already made five payments. Each payment has been for $50,000. So 2018 was his first payment. Then he's got 2019, 2020, 2021 and 2022. So March of 2023, which is coming up in a few weeks of the, the day of shooting this video, that would mark the beginning of year six. And he has already stated, I do not want to make another payment. Meaning the amount of money he's gotten into his mass mutual policy already, the total of $250,000 is it. We just had a review meeting, looked at the policy performance and such, and he said, I'm done at this point in time. Now, what I wanna add about this is that the product is a legacy 100. And what that means, that 100, is if he wanted to, he could elect to continue to make premium payments up until age 100. If, if we were to pull up the actual contract, you would see that premium payments are, are due up until age 100. So does that mean that he must continue to make premium payments until he's 100 years old? Otherwise, the policy will lapse? No, not at all. What you'll see in this particular case is beginning policy year six. We're going to exercise what is referred to as a premium offset, which allows the dividends and interest to pay the premium for him. You have another option available, and you'll see this with the Guardian policy when we get down there an RPU, which stands for reduced paid up, which completely eliminates the premium. My point to mentioning these two options is that when you have a whole life insurance policy, in this case, a traditional product where premiums are due forever up until we're 100 years old, or with the Guardian product, you'll see up until the age of 95, does that mean that you have to make premium payments up until that, up until that age? The answer is no, not at all a policy can be designed where we can stop the funding very, very early, and we've got options we can exercise. When I say we can exercise, I'm referring to the agent that is setting up your policy, then also servicing your policy as the years pass because we want to be able to pull the right levers, submit the proper paperwork in order to be able to exercise these changes. We want to make sure things go smooth as the years pass. So. He's done funding it. He does not want to add anything else into the policy, his mass mutual policy, that is. When we get to Guardian, what you'll see is that he started this policy a year later in 2019. I'll also add this. He was 42 years old when he started the mass mutual product. And then he was 43 years old when he started the Guardian product. Now, this policy was designed a bit differently. He wanted to really be able to push the limit with this policy. He did not want to pay only $50,000 per year. So how he designed it, because he doesn't want to just be billed for a flat amount, he wants a lot of flexibility here. You'll see that his minimum commitment or the amount that he's billed for each year is $9,000. However, the maximum payment he can make each year is $80,000. So the policy is designed in a manner where he is billed for his base premium. You'll also see the term insurance rider is included in that $9,000. But then at his discretion, he can add another $71,000, which will all be directed toward his PUA rider, which accelerate the cash value growth of the life insurance policy. Now what I'll add about this, because we're going to look at actual performance, is that he has not max funded the policy. 
You'll see that in some years, he has max funded it, where he can pay up to $80,000 per year, per year. But in some years, he's only paid the minimum of $9,000. So this will be a nice demonstration to see how policies actually perform if we don't max fund it every year. Because if we max fund it year in and year out, like what you'll see with the mass mutual policy, the numbers look pretty good. And we've seen that the performance is very, very close to what was illustrated, minus any dividend adjustments and such. But the numbers look good if, we, if one has the ability to max fund it every single year. If we don't, however, how do things look? We're going to see exactly that when we get to the numbers. So when we review the performance, here's the big thing. Whenever we are looking at actual performance, not an illustration, but what has actually happened with the whole life insurance policy, here's what we want to look at. With the past, annual statements, which if you have a whole life insurance policy or if you're considering starting a whole life insurance policy, every year what you will, will receive from the insurance company is an annual statement. This provides an overview of your policy benefits, the cash value, the death benefit, any dividends received, any loan interest that's due, if you have a loan outstanding, all of the information that's very important, you will receive that from the insurance company. Now at the same time, you can also track your values in most cases through your online portal. But when we are tracking the actual performance, taking those values from the annual statement is extremely valuable. The annual statement also reflects your net number. So for specifically looking at the cash value, and I see on my annual statement, I've got a net cash value of $100,000 and I decide to cash it out the next day, guess how much I'm going to get? $100,000 in that example. So we'll look at past performance, and we pulled his annual statements. I'll show you one of those uh, with each company in this example. And then for the future, for things moving forward, we want to look at an in-force illustration. So as we look at this information, particularly with the in-force illustrations with MassMutual, we'll look at their dividend rate moving forward, which for 2023, their dividend interest rate is 6% flat. Now, here's one thing I'll add. When you see that, what do you think your policy is growing by? For example, if you have $100,000 in cash value and you Google search Mass Mutual's dividend rate and see that it's 6%, what do you think your cash value will grow to the next year? Well, most people, would assume this, I think it would be safe to assume, they would think that they would earn $6,000 because 6% 6 of $100,000 is what? $6,000. However, that is not the case. And the reason why is because anytime we see a dividend with a life insurance policy or the guaranteed rate for that matter, that is always a gross rate. And the important item to mention is that that is a gross rate that is applied to your policy after the insurance expenses, after what the company refers to as the mortality charges, meaning everything that comes with the actual life insurance policy needs to be accounted for as well. So if one state, so if you're watching this now and you state, okay, if I'm not earning that 6%, what is my policy growing by? Because that's often the question. That's what people want to know. That's what I want to know when I'm looking at the numbers. Like, what's the net at the end of the day? With the cash value and the death benefit, for that matter. So, how we tell, or how we can tell, there's two ways. One, we can look at the internal rate of return. We can look at it on an annual basis. Or we can look at the average internal rate of return. So, if we like the rate, if we like a percentage sign, IRR is good to look at. Or... We can just look at the dollar amount, meaning if I had $100,000 and now it's worth 104, that means my gain was $4,000 that year. If I want to turn that into a percentage, I know that that's 4%. We're going to look at both as we progress through this case study. So Mass Mutual, we'll look at the dividend, and then with Guardian, we'll look at their dividend rate, which is at 5.75%. If I can fit it there. Then we'll also look at exercising the index rider because we did attach that to the policy. And then also we'll look at a worst case scenario when we examine the guaranteed values because he did ask for that. And specifically what we'll view is as follows. We'll look at stopping the funding altogether with both policies. And then we'll look at, look at an alternative option 
that displays one more payment made to the Guardian policy so we can get the total funding up to $250,000. You'll see right now he's right around $180,000 as far as total payments. So what I thought would be cool is if we see his mass mutual policy with a total of $250,000 deposited and then his Guardian policy with a total of $250,000 deposited. So now he's got a total input out of pocket money he's added to the policy, half a million bucks. What does that look like moving forward? We'll look at both policies and then we'll look at the combined values too. So let's begin here with this. Let's look at the past performance and we'll, we'll start off with Mass Mutual. So before we jump into that, let's take a look here. And what we've got is an annual statement. So we see the type of product, a whole life legacy 100. This is a old mass mutual product that has a 4% guaranteed rate. And it is a product that I am a fan of. I like this old product quite a bit. So as we look at this, what do we see? We see the type of product. We see the policy status, premium paying. It does not read pending laps or anything like that, which I do not want to see there. But as I look at it, what do you notice? Here's your cash value, 2022, $195,000 and change. Now, this was before he made his fifth $50,000 payment. So he's been paying $50,000 per year. At this point in time, he's paid 50K per year for four years. So how much has he paid in? $200,000 total. And what is his cash value? 195 and change. He is just about at the break-even point by the end of policy year four. For policy year five, he has not received his annual statement yet. He will in March. At that point in time, we can see the exact cash value. We can also see what it will be too, which I'll show you in a couple minutes. But first, I want to go through a couple more points here. So this was his policy value at the end of year four. When we are measuring the past performance of a life insurance policy, We'll pull each of these annual statements and then export it onto Excel. Look at this. The prior year's cash value, 2400 bucks. Why is it so low? Well, right above it, you see here, we see a loan of $138,000. So what I like about these annual statements, the way Mass Mutual constructs them, is they show, show the loan activity for the policy year we were in. And this is a nice demonstration because it's a case where he paid the loan off. So we get to see exactly what the cash value was, the net cash value that is, with no loan outstanding. So we see in 2022, the beginning loan balance was what? $138,000 and change. We see the loan interest charged, but then here we go. Loan repayments, loan interest paid. He paid those two amounts. And then what's the ending loan balance? Zero, nothing left. So he's paid it off in full. Now when we go back up here, what you'll notice is you see that $195,000 figure twice. The one we looked at first, ending net cash value, 195 and change. Look two lines above it. Ending policy cash value, 195 and change. What's the difference? Here's the difference. Look at 2021. There's your cash value, $2,400, just, just under that. However, here's your loan, and then here's your policy cash value. Notice the difference there? Yeah, that net cash value accounts for the outstanding loan. The $140,000 in change reflects the total cash value that is earning dividends and interest. This is a mass mutual policy in this particular case. So it is non-direct recognition. He's earning dividends and interest on the full 140. So when that policy loan is repaid, the next year it's worth 195. Let's say he carried the loan of 138 and change. What we would see this year is up here, policy cash value, 195 and change. Net cash value would be the 195 and change minus the 138. However, he's paid the loan. That's why these two match. But that is beneficial to be aware of when we are trying to understand wonderful life insurance annual statements. So let's continue on here. So we've got the 195. 
He paid the $50,000. So what will the cash value actually be here? That's the question. Here we go. Year five. Annual outlay is blank. And the reason why is because he has already paid the premium for this year. Net cash value, end year, 253, 727. So what we like to do is when we see an in-force illustration display a certain figure, both on the cash value and death benefit figure, is when we receive the annual statement the next year, is look at that annual statement and make sure that it matches the in-force illustration, because it should. If I've paid my premium and PUA and everything up front on my anniversary date, then when I look at that in-force illustration, it's going to display what the value will hit, assuming the dividend rate has not changed. What we've seen to be the case is that illustrations are accurate on an annual basis, year to year. Where illustrations are not as reliable is when I look at them over a long period of time. For example, he pays nothing in beginning policy year six. So if I said to him, hey, by year 14, when you're 56 years old, you should have 381, almost $382,000 in cash value. Will he have that much? Probably not. Could be a little bit less, could be a little bit more. Why it will be different is because each year, what we want to do is pull the annual statement and see what his actual cash value is. So important to do this. And this is a big reason I'm so, so big on the four major mutual companies is because what we've seen to be so, so consistent is when a policy is designed properly and positioned with one of those four major mutual companies, we've seen them deliver, like deliver strong actual cash values, not just good looking illustrations and then under deliver. So here we go. Ah, one thing I wanna mention here is this option. You'll see a premium here, this annual surrender beginning year. 47.56, that's the premium that's due every year. Meaning he can pay it if he wants. At year eight, we can exercise what's called a reduced paid up, which will eliminate the premium altogether and he'll forfeit the ability to add any premium or PUA payments. However, if we don't do that, which we did not do here, that keeps the option open to add more payments as time passes. So that could be a nice option. What we did do here was cut the term rider after policy year seven, which reducing that death benefit, the earliest we can typically do it is policy year eight, and that prevents a mech from occurring. Meaning if we reduce the death benefit and cut the term rider within the first seven years, that will likely trigger a mech it would trigger a, mech, trigger a mech in this case because his mech limit is 50K and he's been funding up to 50K each year. All right, let's take a look here at this guy. So here is his guardian annual statement. There's the premium, $9,000. Now what I'll add here is that the base premium is actually $8,000. We round it up to $9,000. Everything above the $8,000 true premium first covers the term rider, and then the rest goes toward PUAs. But what I wanna hit on here, started this policy in March, but 2019. So almost exactly one year later. And I like how Guardian has updated their annual statements. This is pretty cool. Where you can look at one annual statement and it will show all prior years cash value. So if we look at older Guardian policies now, you get to see the values just really increase over time. Of course, you can look at all of the annual statements, but they've made things a bit easier when we track the performance. So we see 2020, 2021, 2022, and his next um, annual statement will be generated a couple weeks, March 1st, 2023. But we see his cash surrender value at the end of 2022. So, Let's take a look at the in-force illustration and then we'll look at everything side by side. And this in-force illustration assumes a couple things. One, for 2022, he's already made the payment. Here's his cash value, 172 and change. Do you remember what it was on that annual statement? 
168 and change. So what we've got here is the cash value growth we'll experience as the year passes via dividends and interest. And then we've got the total death benefit at 1.285 million. Then in this example, you'll see another $72,000 payment. This was the case where because he's already paid a total of um, a little over $180,000 or a little less than 180, this brings him up to a total of 250. And you'll see that in the Excel sheet. We've got it all itemized. But then we've got the cash value performance. Here we did exercise a reduced paid up. And again, this is optional. Like we can illustrate it, but it will not actually happen until we make that change. We have to submit paperwork that's signed by the policyholder, like it has to actually be executed in a case like this or any case. Otherwise, the reduced paid up is not automatic. So let's take a look here at the spreadsheet here. This will be pretty cool. And what we'll look at first is stopping all payments now. So on your left, you've got your mass mutual policy. On your right, you've got your guardian policy. Mass mutual started in 2018. What's highlighted in yellow represents what has already happened. Now I want to highlight something here too. Mass mutual, we've got policy year one, 42 years old. What do you notice over here with guardian? It's blank, right? <laughs> that, that whole column is blacked out. And the reason why is because he started the guardian policy a year later. So policy year one with guardian is the same time as policy year two with mass mutual. And why I like to line them up like that is because we found a lot of people, including myself, like to see the cash values side by side. So if I want to combine the values, I can do that. And it just makes it easy to track, especially if my ages are consistent in these columns. But we can format them differently if we want, like it's all about trying to make this very convenient because there's a lot going on here when we look at it. Mass Mutual, he's made the payments, $250,000. Look at that. There's your break-even point between years four and five. That old product would illustrate that all the time. So annual IRR, remember where we talked about the dividend rate? at 6%, well, this annual internal rate of return is just going to display the net growth rate on his cash value on a yearly basis. When's the worst year of a whole life insurance policy? The first year, he pays $50,000, he has 43,000 and change, negative internal rate of return of just over, over 13%. Cash value growth, about a $6,600 loss that year. And then the total gain. This will represent how much more or how much less I have in cash value compared to my total payments over time. So as we look at this, what do you notice? Well, year two, he pays in 50K. The cash value was 43. Now it's just about $89,000. If he got his full 50 back, what, what would it be worth? $93,000 and change, but it's not. Therefore, we lost money that year when we look at it. Worst year of a whole life insurance policy, first year. Second worst year, typically the second year with a traditional policy like this. That's not always the case though, but in many cases it is. But here, there's a hit, there's the loss, total gain, negative $11,000. The reason why, because I paid in 100, my total cash value is just about $89,000. Therefore, I have a loss of 11 grand. You have a death benefit, however, of just about 1.2 million. Now the next year, I pay in 50K again, 88 to 140, meaning I get my 50K back, plus another 1.23%, which comes out to $1,700, and my gain's still in the red, but not as bad as the prior year. And it accelerates each year. So this is the kind of stuff we like to look at so I can see exactly what my policy is growing by each year. These are the questions that are typically asked, or the question is, what's my cash value growing by? Especially if I'm looking at loans, because then the follow-up question is there after I asked, what is my cash value growing by? 
is what, I, what have I paid in loan interest? This is where I can see what did the policy grow by compared to what did I pay in loan interest? Just show me the net dollar amounts. I love doing that. All right, so year six. Look at this jump on the internal rate of return. This is common actually. So the reason why we see that jump there is because we're not making a premium payment. Well, two reasons. One, we stuffed the policy up to the MEC limit in the first five years. We're max funding this thing. But then second, year six, a premium is not made. We're not paid. So we're not paying a premium. Anytime we pay a premium, there are premium loads, premium expenses. There's charges for it. We do not pay anything into PUAs. There are PUA fees. Adding money will grow the overall cash value of a policy. However, when we look at the year that we are making payments, when we take into to consideration the loads, fees, let's just call it the cost or expenses, that's going to drag the annual internal rate of return down. So when, when all of a sudden we have a year we're not making those payments, well, look at that. The IRR takes a nice little jump. And this year, why does it jump up again? Year eight. The reason why, remember that term rider cut? That's why. So we removed some of the drag, which allowed for a little bit more growth there, which is nice. So here we've got the net IRR, and then also the net cash value growth each year, what the insurance company is giving me, and then the total gain. So if we look at the total gain, let's look at age 50. I've paid in 250, I've got 319. There's a difference of over $69,000. That's the total gain on cash value. The death benefit does appreciate over time as well in this example. Looking at the guardian example, what do you see here? Started the policy, he paid 80 grand. His cash value was just over 70,000. It's a loss of over 11%. Next year, he paid just the minimum. Total payments, $89,000. Look at that IRR though. If you rewind the video, you'll see that the annual statement displayed this cash value of about 82 in policy year two. There's the IRR. So there's the total gain he received in year two. So here's often where an area of confusion pops up. Year two, I experienced a gain, but why did I go backwards in year three? Well, I'll start with this. If he would have max funded it at 80K in year two, we would not have a case like this where it goes backwards in year three. We would see it positive. Why we're going backwards here, and it's slight, but we did go back, is going back to that item we mentioned earlier. So when we make premium payments, what do we have? There's loads, fees, expenses. The same is true with PUA payments. So here, we did not add any PUAs. Policies compounding. A nice rate too. The next year, the policy continues to compound, but that PUA payment I made, the fees isolated in policy year three exceeded the total gains in the policy to the point where the net number was negative 1400 bucks. Past year, paid 9,000 again, so he's kind of been going in a pattern here unintentionally. <laughs> Total payments, 178, break even, anticipated to be year five. You'll see that similar jump on the internal rate of return, healthy jump when we execute the reduced paid up. So those are the two policies. This is what he's paid already. So if he stops now altogether, the Enforce illustrations display what he could have. And of course, we want to track the actual performance as time passes. What we'll look at next is the same thing, but adding another payment to his guardian policy. What we're going to do here is look at that illustration we had up earlier, which displays the payment of $72,000. Here we go. So this is assuming in March, he dumps in another 72 grand. So if he does that, what happens to the policy? Well, there you go. Total of 250 in, and then by the end of policy year five, it's 249 and change. Meaning if he adds this 72 in March of 2023, in March of 2023, the cash value will not be 249,712. 
be closer to, call it 245 or so. As the year passes, or I should say March of 2024, the end of policy year five, once the dividends and guaranteed interest is applied to the policy, then I'll see it jump to that 249 and change. There we go. Total of 250 in. Cash value continues to appreciate over time. Got the cash value growth. Also the total gain. We can scroll down if we like to see things over time. But of course, we've got to track the actual results. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a look at the combined values. You know what? First, very quickly, we'll look at the exact same thing, but with the guaranteed values. So what this assumes is just Guardian. The first four years have already happened. So what this assumes moving forward is that no dividends are ever applied. It also assumes that the maximum charges for riders, particularly the term rider, is assessed in this policy. And it demonstrates a worst case scenario, really it demonstrates a worst case scenario over here because I can see what the performance will look like based on the guarantees if I pay nothing in ever. We do have to execute that reduced paid up option, which is huge when we're looking at the guarantees. Look at that big jump. But it does allow him to see a worst case scenario because he wanted to see that. He's comparing this with another life insurance product he's considering right now that is a variable type product, but he just wants to see guaranteed, non-guaranteed, and look at everything side by side. Same thing with the index rider. When we take a look at that, the index rider offers a little bit more upside potential, and you can see it in the IRR. But let's wrap up with the combined values. All right. So the combined values, and both of them, we assumed a total of $250,000 is paid. This is really the item I wanna focus on. We've got the indexed rider with Guardian assumed over here, which is good to look at. He does like that rider, but at the same time, if I flip that rider on and the market does what it's always done, it'll perform, like it will look good. However, personally, I'd much rather look at dividends to set expectations more conservative than I elect, if I elect to proceed for, forward with that and it produces more cash value, that's great. The last thing we wanna do is show this and then have it deliver what we have over here. Okay, so let's take a look here. What he's already done, paid in 428 grand and his combined cash values, $426,000 and change. And again, this will be March of 2023 is when we'll see the end of policy year four. So he started March of 2022. That's why policy year five, we've got that we've got in 2022 and it ends in 2023. Then year six begins March of 2023. We assumed that $72,000 payment to the guardian policy, combined values, I am positive, then I pay nothing and that cash value just rides. Pretty sweet, huh? One thing here too, year one, death benefit 1.168, year two, death benefit three million and change. Why the sudden jump? The reason for the sudden jump is because he started the Guardian policy in year two, that's why. So we added another $1.8 million change. But anyway, the purpose of this and where we found it very helpful for a lot of individuals is you can look at your actual policy performance as the years pass, as opposed to just trying to piece all of the annual statements together to look at in-force illustrations and such. That's important material because we, we should have that. It's information we received directly from the insurance company, but at the same time, now we've got it all just on a simplified spreadsheet, which we will always strive to simplify further. And in any event, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, let us know if you have any questions below. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.